Welcome to Perfect Organism, the Alien Saga podcast. We uh, are coming to you today on Friday, the weekend of July 4th, to discuss some major news with my partner, Patrick, and a guest, Paul Herman, when we'll get to that in a second. We're here just to discuss the, we- the recent news and I guess the migration of the alien IP and Predator, we're not going to talk about that, um, to <coughs> Marvel and uh, what that might mean for the franchise, uh, not just in terms of uh, the comics, but the movies. Uh, and what this step means. So without further ado, thank you for watching. Thank you, Paul Herman, for coming on the show. It's uh, to be here. If you want to talk a little bit about what, who you are and what you do and why you're here. Okay, so uh, my name is Paul Herman, and uh, I've been podcasting for since 2011 uh, on Marvel mainly, and uh, in the last five, six years on Star Wars. Big fan of both uh, franchises. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Alien and Predator franchises. Sorry, guys, I had mentioned Predator, um, but uh, but anyway, uh, Alien. Yeah, I've I've been doing that for a long time. Uh, I've been reading comics since I was uh, in elementary school, basically. Since my first memories are Star Wars and Marvel comics. I uh, if you guys are familiar with the Secret Wars comic books from uh, the '80s, oh, yeah. I had the toys. My parents bought the comics, and then that my, I have an older brother who's six years older than I am. And so uh, I, he bought like all these comics, like the X-Men comics and whatever. And I was just eating all that up. And I just, I never, he kind of drifted off and I never did. So it was always comics, Star Wars and, and you know, whatever. And I didn't discover uh, Alien until an, an Alien franchise probably really I started to love it until I was in my 19 or 20 years old. I was at a friend's house. Uh, we did a road trip and I was just kind of, I was like all super zoned out and he has a basement and, and he had alien and aliens. And I, I said, Oh, uh, I don't think I've ever seen these. I've seen like, you know, bits and pieces. He's like, dude, you need to stay just hanging out down here and just watch them. And I'm like, okay. And I've always wanted to, just never did. And I just fell in love with them. Um, I, I, after I watched the films, I watched all the special features. I mean, I just consumed so much and I had already seen a resurrection uh, in high school uh yeah that was interesting um and then <laughs> i had seen no it's okay it's okay uh and i also had seen um bits and pieces of alien 3 now i i gotta i'm gonna be honest with you guys so alien 3 was one of these weird things where i had just seen like you know the previews of it because you know, in school i'd be, you know i'd be i'd see things and go sigourney weaver a huge sigourney weaver fan i love ghostbusters and all that stuff and you know i, I remember thinking like yeah, this is weird you know aliens is weird and I'd, I'd only I'd see like you know 20 minutes here and 30 minutes here on like a, those free preview weekends Do you guys remember those free like for showtime at hbo like do you remember that yes like yes like, totally uh, they would have this uh you know cable would have free weekends of hbo and showtime yeah, they, they and, still do that um i mean again i've seen like i've seen like a majority of it just you know throughout the years but um finally watched it i loved it i saw the assembly cut and i loved it i i couldn't believe like because i know there's a, there's a stigma about it and then after I watched it, I kind of discovered you guys later on and I started listening to the podcast and whatnot and realizing, oh, more people love this movie than not like it anymore. It seems like it's been loved. It's kind of like grew to be appreciated anyway. Uh, I know it was David Fincher and all that stuff. And so, uh, yeah, so I, but yeah, I, Alien and Aliens are my favorite, some of my favorite films ever, ever. I've watched them a zillion times and I love them. So yeah, uh, I, I still read Marvel comics. I just started diving into the, this is so weird. I actually started binging the Dark Horse comics like a month ago. Like literally, I just started like reading a crap load of them. And then when they made this announcement today, I'm like, this is so weird. Like, it's so weird because I grew up and still am a Marvel zombie. So it's like, you know, it, it's just weird. It, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mind, you know what? And um, I'm not sure if I can curse or not. On you can thing, swear. So I, oh, you can swear. Okay. I know uh, Jamie is not exactly the biggest fan of a, a covenant, which I don't blame him, but, but yeah, I, it's okay. I don't love or hate it either. It's just, they're okay. Um, I, I like AVP more than most people, the first one. So, um, but, but yeah. <laughs> AVP Requiem is the one, that's the great equalizer. Like nobody who has ever come on the show has ever said, I love AVP Requiem. My <laughs> wife and I went and saw Requiem in the theater. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'll never forget, we just were, were laughing and um, um there's the guy the one of the characters had like a pizza hat on and it was pizza one and yeah. we just kept saying pizza one and like the whole time <laughs> it, we're just ridiculous yeah so uh I hate that fucking movie I, I, I listen i don't like it but i still enjoy watching those scenes the the, the predator alien scenes like i could fast forward through everything else 
it's turn the like, brightness up all the way and be that's a little drunk. true too and then, you know there's, there's at least there's some cool there's some cool practical effects to watch there, right? there is some cool stuff in there but yeah that, that's that's my history with everything in a very very short short uh way so nice you know you know another little moment of cosmic coincidence paul um we were watching infinity war this morning for like the 300th time and uh and of course there's like a number I'm of sorry. references direct and indirect stop in infinity it. war <laughs> <laughs> jamie stop starting shit no <laughs> i like <laughs> infinity war actually i love it i love infinity war i love infinity war i just don't like the final you don't like the final like acts of things you know no. why you know why you know why because you, you're a bitch oh <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! We have our big debate you know, episode coming. I like final hand acts hand that have integrity. That's what I oh, like. Oh, oh. Do, you, do you like? Do you like? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I, I, it you was don't. my favorite the for first a long thing you, time. You saw in theaters, so yeah, because you saw it in theaters. No, the but, first but, thing but, I saw in theaters was Empire, but I was really young. The first one I remember was Jedi because God, I was you, seven you were years old. Old enough to see Empire in theaters? That's fucking. I was crazy three. I was three. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so so going back for a second, but of course, you know, Peter Parker is like, you know, like there's this, you know, really old, you know, movie, Aliens, yeah. and and I was and 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 I, you know, I heard about this announcement last night or yesterday. Mm-hmm. I saw that this morning. I was like, oh, this is so, this is so weird because, like Paul, yeah. I'm a, a huge comics guy. Like oh, I, awesome. my pull box is like 45 titles long. It's out of control. Jeez. We love the comics in this household. We read primarily Marvel, but also Dark Horse. And the reason we love Dark Horse so much is not just because of the Alien and Predator IP, although I think that's been incredibly stewarded for the last 30 something yeah. years. Um, it's also because they're, they have these amazing creative, you know, creator-owned properties things like Umbrella Academy, things like Mike mm-hmm. Mignola's, you know, Hellboy series, like all of these things that have come out of Dark Horse that could only really be fostered in a creator-owned environment that are really audacious and crazy and fun and interesting and offbeat. Um, Marvel is is not, at least in its main incarnation, is really not the place where that kind of thing happens, right? Mm-hmm. In, in, a, in the Marvel, you know, integrated comics universe, sis, <laughs> there's a very, things are very tightly controlled. Yeah. They have to be to be able to be sustained over a long period of time by multiple creative teams, et cetera. And uh, and I, this is this is a, a, an enormous announcement, I think. Uh, I was talking with Jamie before you connected, Paul. This goes like so far beyond just the sort of like who's handling the comics like this. is obviously something we've been talking about, right? Because there's also NECA, there's also like Hollywood collectibles, there's Sideshow, there's all these other property holders that we mm-hmm. don't really know what's happening with yet that are doing duplicative work to what Disney does, right? Disney also has licenses with Hasbro and other people. Yeah. So like we knew stuff was going to be coming. But Dark Horse has been the home of the expanded universe. Dark Horse and Titan Books to a degree, but really Dark Horse for a really long time. Um, that has been where some amazing experimental stories have taken place. Some amazing novels have come from. And these comics that have just really been, for a lot of us, and I know people you know, like Michael McCulloch, who's on the show all the time, people like Aaron Percival, people like Dave Vogel, you know, we talk about these things like they're you know, our childhood Bibles or something because they mean so much to us. I, there's a sense of me, the sort of the, you know, the nitpicky fan part of me that is really worried about this announcement because I really don't want to lose that. There's the other part of me that loves Marvel in itself and, 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 is, and it thinks that really cool things could come of this if it's handled properly. I think for what it's worth that Marvel has done a really good job of Conan since they acquired that. Um, you know, he popped up in the 2099 crossover stories that, that came earlier in the year. Are you They've serious? Been, yeah, there's a one-off. Oh. It's, and it's freaking, no, it's really cool. It's oh. crazy, but it's really cool. So, okay. so, so I guess that's an example of, you know, like, like Conan the, the Sumerian, like that's something where I would never in a million years have thought that would make sense in Marvel. And they're kind of making it work with the Savage Avengers outfit, mm-hmm. you know, teaming in with people like Venom and these kind of, these other anti-heroes and things. They're mm-hmm. in Punisher. There's some yeah. interesting stuff being done there. I do not like the idea personally of seeing, you know, aliens and predators teaming up with the Savage Avengers to go on fucking missions or something. So I'm, or the I'm brood. assuming, <laughs> or the brood, which is just aliens, right? Yeah, no, right. No, there's, no. there's some <laughs> potential issues there. Um, but yeah, I, I think, anyway, long story short, the reason why I think this is such a big deal is because this is the first definite indication that stuff has been happening behind the scenes yes. of the alien mm-hmm. property and we have been wondering even just last week we were like what what is going on like why can't why is nobody getting back to us why are we hearing no announcement about anything mm-hmm. why are these movies just popping up on hbo all of a sudden and going like like what is going on behind the scenes who's making the deals well here we go and we have it not only from a really high up marvel editor but from david finch who's an amazing artist who has amazing done things artist. like moon knight he's a freaking great 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 artist oh. and he c- came up with these two great promotional pieces that people can go see they're all over the internet um and it's like it's really it's a really invested in thing that's happening now which is crazy to me it is crazy it's uh i i i hope again we were talking before you came on i hope it's a sign of things to come and patrick you were saying something about 
there's other IPs there's other IPs where this hasn't happened with with Marvel where they haven't brought in so Marvel doing this to to Alien and certainly Predator means it has connotations about what they're planning don't you think in terms of oh yeah so maybe, maybe the films Horse, or whatever remember Dark Horse owns an enormous amount of intellectual property or they have licensing you know deals yeah. on an enormous amount of intellectual property um from other movie studios and so when marvel absorbs those movie studios they have to go to people like dark horse and say like hey here's we're going to buy this from you or this is part of the business deal is that we're going to get the rights mm -hmm. to produce this content now um and so they they own a lot more than they're putting out right mm -hmm. um and you know i i think they're working on buffy now if i'm not mistaken what? i don't know marvel I'm is know about that yeah really I think, or or it's in development or something. But th there's movement at least because they, they own Buffy now. I didn't know they owned um, Buffy. Wow. Because wasn't Buffy owned by Fox previously? Is, I thought it was Warner Brothers. Is it Warner Brothers? Well, it was on the WB network. That's all I know. I'm not a big Buffy. Fan, so I have no yeah, idea. I. You know what? You guys keep talking. I'm going to do research, so we, so we can be hard hitting journalism here on Perfect. Yeah, all right, I love it. All right, <laughs> uh, it, it, Jamie. It, if it, so, I, I'm curious. I don't mean to jump in because it's because I have a lot to say about this as, as well as Patrick as did, did as well. You know, because I love comics. And, and Jamie, I'm, are you how familiar are you, are you with the comics? Just I'm curious. not a comic guy. Like I, I when I was younger, teenager, uh, I collected the Aliens comics. That's it. Sure. I'm more. I, I'm a film guy. I just, I need moving images. Yeah. Um, but I did read when I was r way little. Um, I read Frank Miller's um, The Dark Knight. And I remember oh, yeah. um, this friend of my brother's had the, the Frank Miller and the, and they're like, you can't read this. This is too old for you. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit. Like, this is Batman. Like, how can, what's yeah. wrong with it? And I, I remember, like, flipping through the pages and seeing some, like, nudity in the in the yeah. graphic novel. The, 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 and it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was way, way dark. And I was like, holy shit. And I do remember <laughs> wanting to read more about that Batman because that Batman yeah. interested me. Um, and I, I've always okay. been a Superman fan, so. Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll see. By the way, Dark Knight, my brother had the graphic novel, and I read that and looked over it when I was in kindergarten, and my parents had no idea what was in that book. They said, <laughs> oh, it's Batman. It's fine. And it's like, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm like, why does this, this lady have, like, Nazi symbols on her boobs? You know, yeah. I mean, that was weird. So um, the kind of thought what Patrick was saying is that there, this is giant. I think to me, when I first read this, the first thing I thought of was exactly what you guys thought of and, and you, uh, what you just brought up, Patrick, the fact is there's movement. This is, this is the first thing we're seeing with this IP, with these IPs uh, that they're moving on. And we're wondering like, where's the announcement? You know, I know you guys, you guys heard some rumors potentially of some things I remember you know, reading about or hearing about or whatever, um, like an anime film of AV, AVP or something. Is that, was that you guys or? Yes. Um, okay. Yeah, there was more, you know, there's more been, than a rumor. Well, yeah, I have, no, I have no idea. I, yeah. Um, and you know what, like, that's the thing it, you wonder where is this stuff, right? Like where, right. why right. isn't, you know, where it honestly, like this is to me is the first ball to drop and it's a big ball to drop because yeah. you're taking all could look at star Wars. Right. And now I'm gonna bring my star Wars stuff into it. So people who hate star Wars, I apologize. Just bear with me. Dark horse had in control of the, uh, the, the star Wars IP for, you know, 20, 30, whatever, how many years it was a long time since like the early nineties. Uh, Dark Empire, rest in peace. Uh, love that story. Um, anyway, that they had all those comics, and then all of a sudden, Marvel said, "Done," or you know, we're gonna take over the IPs, whatever. And then they started fresh. And then what the you know, obviously they brought everything over and reprinted everything and made a crap load of money, and are still reprinting things and making a crap load of money off of it. So they're you know, these books aren't necessarily gonna go away. And that's the first thing I thought. I was like, okay, they're going to come in. They're going to be like, we, we're going to Disney and Fox or whoever it is, is, is running. I'm assuming it's Fox or, or excuse me, century or uh, 20th century. 20th century. Yeah. yeah. 20th century is probably like, we're going to go in, we're going to put out whatever, either TV shows, movies or whatever. And we're just going to get Marvel involved and we're going to just launch and we're just going to throw a lot of stuff for us to buy. And, and that this is the first thing that they're going to do because they have control of it. I mean, books in, in those things are sell in comics sell, but to me, like if you have comics and you have Marvel, I mean, you've got, yeah, it, it's, this is, this is big there. This is, this is the gear up for these franchises to be relaunched in some way or another. And the fact they got a great all-star artist like David Finch back, I had no idea that he was back. I know he was on uh, DC for a long time, but I had no idea that he was actually back 
with Marvel and like you, Patrick, uh, I love his Moon Knight stuff, um, yeah, the too. art anyway. The writing was, was okay, um, but the, his art was phenomenal. I mean, that's the only reason to buy that book is the art. I mean, most comics you buy it for the art, in my opinion, but that's a whole other story. Um, but no, I, I think he, that was his alien specifically was beautiful. I mean, oh yeah, I was. Jamie, did I mean, you see? Did you see the artwork itself? The from like, of course the I saw a bitch. I'm the one who okay. shared okay, it. Bitch. Mm. Oh, I don't go on Facebook, Jamie. I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> yeah, so, I know. <laughs> the, the, the artwork, the artwork looks great. And David Finch is one of those people who I would, I would always bring. I, I specifically have singled him out in the past on this show, oh. like in, in, the, in the distant past, as somebody I would love to see draw an Alien because I think he's like just such a great fit for it. You know, he yeah. has some of the. Uh, like that kind of gritty realism, a really like strong depth of field. Like I, I remember specifically mm-hmm. going back to his Moon Knight because that was kind of where I fell in love with his art. Ah. And I was like in college and I was like, it was a very fertile time for me with comics. Mm-hmm. I remember specifically feeling like his artwork felt like it was in, in motion on the page. Like he did a lot of really cool things with motion blurring and incorporating Photoshop into it. And like, I, I'm very excited if he gets attached to these titles to see what happens. Um, By the way, while, while we're paused, so I looked it up in the interest of hard hitting journalism, and it actually is a Fox property, or 20th century property. So, so I don't I know the corrected. WB licensing deal must have been a something something. Yeah, but, my bad. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. So yeah, so so wow. so they are not. However, I was wrong about this. They are not producing or looking to produce new Buffy content or comics. That license was transferred after they bought to it boom. from Dark Horse to Boom, ah, right? Okay. Home of on our other podcast, the amazing Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep extended comic series, which and the Dark Crystal, and and. <laughs> <laughs> and Dark Crystal, is it really? Do they publish Dark Crystal too? Yeah, Who they does? Do. They do. Oh, shit, yeah. I know they just got a whole b- new set of writers because their first series. Well, I do read comics a little bit. Were shit. Um, <laughs> now it's better. They are shit. I I, I bought yeah. that because of you, and I was like, Jamie, I can't read this crap. Yeah, anymore. they're shit. They're garbage. Um, but yeah, but but so so but this is only. So I looked it up. This is only the fourth thing that they've actually like that. There's been motion on. So. There was Star Wars in 2015, obviously, mm-hmm. which which we should get back to in a second, and then Conan, and then uh, AVP, and Boom is now doing Buffy. So Star Wars, like for anybody reading current Marvel releases, like Paul and myself, there's like 400 million fucking Star Wars comics to read right now. It is out is it is out of control, cool. and and a lot of them are really good. Yeah, but they're it's, it's most, like yeah. this some of them. To me, like if if you've ever been on the fence about Marvel Unlimited before, oh, and you're like God. looking for something like a kind of a reason to give it a shot, just do it for the Star Wars stuff because you will have access instantaneously to like more, way more books mm-hmm. than you'll be able to read for a oh, long yeah. time. Marvel um, Limited, incre- yeah, it's it incredible. is great. Yeah, it's and so and and now, hey, that's another thing we haven't even thought about yet. These Alien comics will hopefully be available at some point on that platform as well. You want right? to circle back to that because I have yeah, I have a theory yeah. about this. Yeah. Okay, so I so, mean, interrupt. I apologize, Patrick. Um, no, no, good. Because I, I I specifically sought out something and I, I noticed something. So as you as you realize, I I'm a Marvel zombie, but I don't I read DC, I read Dark Horse, but I'm I've always been Marvel. It's just been my my main thing. So anyway, um, I use Marvel Unlimited like no other. It's probably my most used app, and I love it. So when when uh, we we started scheduling the show, I was you know wanted to get my journalism hat on and be like, okay, I can figure this stuff out, you know, and did some research and I went to go, well, the first thing I thought of was to kind of get the ideas for tone. I went to, I wanted to go to Conan uh, comics, right? That's the first thing I thought of was because they brought the IP back and I have not, I'm not a big Conan fan. I wanted to look at through those books and see what the, what it was like. And because I already have Star Wars and everything, right? So I go, okay, I will Marvel Unlimited. It's not there. And I know that marvel puts out anything that's a year if it's past like six months or six whatever months, whatever yeah. it is yeah six months it's out there and i looked i'm like it's not here it's not I looked there. On, yeah comiXology oh. unlimited it's there mm-hmm. and i and then also you brought up savage avengers patrick that's not on there either and, that's not on unlimited and i so i looked it up and i believe it's a licensing thing with the um the property maybe wow. but I, also now this goes back into what we're going to talk about these comics and Marvels, and I'm not sure if you want to jump this far ahead, but it kind of all ties together. So bear with me. Yeah. What I because I I just I, I downloaded the uh, the Conan comics. I wanted to see kind of what the tone was. Right. Again, I'm not a big. I mean, I'll read maybe I'll read them one day, but I'm not a big Conan fan. Um, Jason Aaron wrote the, uh, the those comics, and he's a great writer. Yeah. Um, or yeah, I think he's, he's he's good. He's mostly good. You know what you know what I'm saying, Patrick. Uh, yeah, you read yeah. comics, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, but um, I was look, looking through them, and I said, "Huh, these are pretty violent, and these are pretty sexualized, more than I'd say the mainstream Marvel comics." 
So I immediately thought maybe that's another reason why Marvel and Disney don't want to have Conan being affiliated with the Disney brand and Marvel mm. brand, right? So that brought me to Aliens and Predator. Sorry. Um, so I was going to keep making that joke here. I, I love, you know, <laughs> that's fun. But, but yeah, yeah, I do yeah. too. I just I don't I, I don't like the mixing. I think it's lowbrow. <sighs> I agree you disagree but anyway that's just me uh but uh but yeah no but but here's the thing and i'll let you guys kind of your, your thoughts on this guys but i immediately thought immediately thought when what i i couldn't find conan comics on marvel unlimited and i thought this is a big deal because this could be what they might do with alien and predator going forward with their comic books because remember what the press release said they're gonna reprint those old books they're not gonna and and i i just read like earth war and there's a tons of there's tons of swearing in that book and and the reason i bring that up is because as, as patrick can you know, attest to this they don't swear in the marvel universe and so they use they, asterisks creatively but there's very few swears yes. yeah and so with that said they're either gonna you know censor it or what i think they either will just be not, it's not gonna be a max imprint it's not I don't, it's not max you, you can't sell that right so Max, it's gonna have is there is there like adults only yeah kind of exactly like sorry violence nudity yeah. yeah so it's gotta be so it's gonna be probably in the vein of Conan and maybe it's not gonna be a part of Marvel Unlimited and that's why I wanted to bring that up because Conan's not on there and the Savage Avengers aren't on there and it's probably because licensing but also probably don't want to have Conan involved in with that massive all those massive books with that Disney's a part of to say is this what my kids gonna read these Conan books I mean. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I was surprised when Marvel bought Conan or the, or the licensed. I'm like, why'd they do that? That's weird. I mean, they have Miracle Man, which that's a whole you know, thing for, um, you know, Neil Gaiman, you know, or whatever. I, I butcher names, by the way. So if I say things wrong, just correct me. Um, that's, a, you know, an old uh, favor basically from Joe Quesada, but like they haven't really been doing adult stuff. So when I looked through Conan, I went, okay, that this isn't on Unlimited, but it's on Comixology Unlimited there could be a future imprint separate from Marvel or something like that. That's going to be Marvel, but not Marvel. If that makes any sense. And it's not going to have the same connotation for families to be like, well, this is a part of the Marvel universe. Why are they saying shit? And you know, all this stuff. So, and all this gore. So I think there's going to be something coming down the line potentially with now that you have Conan, you have aliens and now predator and, and, and whatever's coming out with the new IPs that Fox owns or excuse me, 20th century. So yeah, that's, that, that's the first thing I wanted to kind of bring up is like, I don't know if these books are going to necessarily necessarily going to come to Marvel limited. That's a really good point. And I think that a really good business case can be made for that, for having kind of a third stream of content mm -hmm. for things that aren't cause, cause Marvel max is like, nobody, nobody's going to buy that. Although I have to say, Brian K. Vaughn and Kyle Hotz did a Marvel Max title called The Hood. That is like one oh, of the that's great. fucking runs every mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's amazing. But like no nine people have read it, right? Because yeah. it's it's you have to like go to a special part of the store and like it's 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 like awkward. Um so like <laughs> having this like this third this third style, I think would be a really great fit for it. Mm -hmm. And I think also could lead to other ins for other content streams for them in the future, too. Like I I can't imagine seeing this on you know on Disney Plus, but I could imagine seeing it on Hulu, right? Mm -hmm. We've talked about this quite a bit. There, I think, I think what we're going to see as Disney evolves, as it keeps absorbing like some sort of a monster, all of these other IPs, is they are going to have to diversify themselves yep. to avoid contaminating the brand. And I think that this is a really good indication of that. I want to say one Marvel title that I think is such an indication of what they can do when they when they go as dark as they can in a mm -hmm. mainstream way. And Jamie, I actually specifically want you to write this down. You don't have to like like I, I will text it to you later, but I want because I want you to read it and I don't I don't want you to fucking forget about it, okay? <laughs> Immortal Hulk. Oh dude! Im Immortal yes! Hulk, right? Oh so 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 Al Ewing started this new this new Hulk comic a few years ago, and it's it's been like the best selling comic book in the world at some points. Yeah, outselling DC titles. Phenomenal. Like Batman, so it's absolutely incredible. Um and it is like a heart-wrenching, terrible, like very intense body horror journey into what the actual implications of being hulk would be like what, what that would actually do to somebody's psyche and to the people around him and to the into a world that would have to include a, a hulk in it right and it goes into this metaphysical place and it's just it's just an astonishing astonishingly hmm. intense dark story that's really really uh, upsetting to read but beautifully made and I mean, to me seeing yeah. something like if they could get somebody like al ewing like oh, somebody God. who's in the marvel stable who can write the shit out of something 
to write an alien story like that and to bring top level talent to it to have alex ross covers like i mean it would oh, be unbelievable, alex ross right? Oof. yeah dude i i put funny i, I just put for little notes here uh, alien writers ewing is number one on my yes list. yes and, wouldn't that be great oh god he'd be he's incredible he wrote um he's written some uh, great stuff too um his ultimates run the original ultimates yeah. uh, not the original ultimates but the newer one with galactus in it yep. phenomenal stuff and and, and, and uh, uh jamie i'm gonna say if 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 to sell it on the immortal hulk to you more are you a david lynch fan oh yes big fan it's like David Lynch writing a comic book in my really? opinion. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. It, that's okay. it, 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 there's a twi- it's like Twin Peaks meets superheroes, in my okay. opinion. Okay. Okay. It's that it same that same sweet spot, but where where everything is just unreal enough that you feel like you might be dreaming it, and then and then when the dream becomes a nightmare, it's really shocking because you mm-hmm. didn't know you were asleep, mm-hmm. you know, kind of a thing. And, 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 and it, it brings old um, whole continuity, which if you're a Peter David fan like me, like yeah, I fucking just... love Peter David. Yeah, speaking word. of 2099, yeah, we got to we oh, do a separate, we got to do a separate, a separate comic show at some point. It is um, not. I have though. the elephant in the room for me though with Alien being at Marvel and is crossovers. I hope they don't do that. I don't know if they're going to do what you're saying, Paul, and it's going to mm-hmm. be the separate thing. I think we. And you no, know, you can't swear in Marvel comics and all of, all of that. Aliens hard R. I mean, alien. Yeah, it is. That yeah. whole world is. And I would think, to me, it's like you're ten years old and you're like, oh, Wolverine should battle. You know, <laughs> dude, Wolverine Spice. versus Predators would be fucking you know, cool. I'm or sorry. or <laughs> Superman should battle <laughs> Spider Man. You know, and that's what you're doing. And so when I see things cross, that's what I think. That's what I think. It's ten year olds like, oh, Playing let's fight. Figures. You know. Yeah. So what's wrong and, with that? Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not for me. <laughs> that's um, fair. That's fair. That's but, fair. But, but also, me, well, the predator is okay with that. Per- yeah, person. whatever. Yeah, predator yeah, yeah. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, oh my I, really, I really enjoy those movies. Actually, I really do. I know. Last one. I actually really do movie. enjoy. Um, but my, I think I'm a little bit oh. more um, concerned about alien crossing over because I hold that as yeah. something mm. really sacred. It has its own mythology. It doesn't need to cross with any of those you know, worthy and amazing titles that they have for sure. I might not be a comic book reader per se, but I do respect what they do and the world that they set up. And I just don't feel like Alien needs that. And they don't need Alien either. Um, And I hope it can be its own. And if they want to continue to cross it with Predator, that's fine. I just hope that they keep it its own entity. I don't want to see an alien fighting along fucking Wolverine. I I just... Well, didn't the press release already say that? They said it wasn't going to be... Integrating? I thought I read that. I don't I remember wrong. actually. Did it say? I, I feel like I took from it that they were looking to integrate it more into the into the existing Marvel universe. But I could have also misread it because I was so emotional when I was reading. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. That's fair. That's That's a big <laughs> Hang on. Let me let, let, let me let me pull out the press release. I'm, I'm going back from journalism. You guys talk. Patrick's yeah, Jimmy, no, I, I, They're going to make a, a comic with 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 the X Men and Alien and Ripley. <laughs> They did. It's called. It's called the Brood. That they're 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 all. And over. That, well, that's the thing too. We have to talk about is that they're already been. They've been aping all yeah. of this shit for decades now. And it, even most like astonishingly in this new. Oh my god. Oh, Jamie's gonna love that. I'm gonna talk about this. <laughs> <sighs> so I just JJ JJ Abrams and his son Henry Abrams. Oh the gosh. Son, they have a a new ongoing uh, Marvel title. It's a Spider-Man title, that is like em- embarrassingly close to just straight up plagiarizing alien well specifically aliens um so uh that's this is something where i think we will see um wait there are things like that yeah yeah really because i read the first there's only one issue out right no there's three has there there been three out now like yeah yeah see here's what's going on everything's screwed up because of because the distribution shut down because of covid and the publishing shut down because of covid so like all of these comics are are like so like i didn't even get any new titles for like three months right right right. get the first three issues of of this and i think you can get it on digital um Oh, huh. so check it out. Yeah, Spider Man, the Abrams one. Well, I have, I read and the Sarah Pacelli, of course. Who, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's incredible. great. Yeah, yeah, right. No, I, I read the first issue and I liked Did it. Did you not get strong aliens overtones from that first issue? I, I never, I never got words. No, I never got. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Oh, interesting. Dave Gogol and I were sharing this in, the, in our messenger thread when it when it first came out because there are like it's almost shot for shot reboots. The, the one with the sun, it. right? The or the yeah. the sun. Yeah. Really? I, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about the villain in particular. I, I don't want. I don't want to say too many spoilers. Ah, oh, gotcha. Okay, the yeah, villain. Yeah. yeah, I haven't read. He's barely in the first issue. Right, right. So, it's really okay. the second issue. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. But um, but yeah, but but this is the thing is that like now now Marvel's going to have to reckon with this. But I do have to say, anybody who listened to our frame rate on Into the Spider Verse will know, you know, oh, from very recent conversations that um, if there's one thing that uh, Marvel does well, it's it's juggling multiple universes and continuities. Like that's something that. Uh, is, is and it's something that they embrace and that they're really open about and that there are different storylines that are self-contained within the Marvel continuity that don't have to actually allied with one another and that it is okay for that to happen. So it's it's conceivable that there could be, you know, an Earth version of a Marvel continuity somewhere that includes aliens and predators within mm. it where they do interact with, you know, other yeah. Marvel elements, mm -hmm. but it's not in the main Marvel continuity or the main alien and predator continuity. Yeah. Well, it's so like Batman and Predator. Events, it could be like Batman and Predator yeah. or like, you know, Batman or like, you know, Judge Dredd versus Predator versus aliens. There, there's a lot of things that they could do with this. And right? really, um, the, I think the reality is, I think that those crossovers are fine in comic book form. I, I don't think that they'll be as successful as we've seen with Alien versus Predator. They're not necessarily successful agree, crossovers. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what comic books are there for. They're there to explore the imagination and to do things that you've always loved to do as a kid. For sure, that's what they're they're there for. Um, uh, I mean, I, I give it a little bit of shit because I think it's funny, but I, I, I also think that you can do way more with a comic and a book and a graphic novel than you can ever do. And, and even in terms of like um, budget, you know, budget, you could do in a comic, which you could never do in a movie in terms of the budget, it, you know, the movie would be way too big. Um, you know, Jamie, or, uh, you know, one of the things that you, you love visual medium and I, I love visual medium too. That's why I love comics. And that's the thing I was just curious because you're a big movie guy and, and you like, is it, it's the idea of like a two hour movie, like, you know, kind of movie narrative, or is it that's what you love more in the medium or, because for me, again, I, I, it's hard for me to read a book. Like I have to get audio books. I'm gonna, I'm, I have ADHD bad, so I need audio books or comics and that's it, like movies, whatever. I, I can't do, I can't sit down and read. It's really hard for me. And so I'm just curious, if you're a visual guy, if like, is, is, are comics, is this the fact of like sitting down and like re reading a comic? I'm just curious. Oh, I am definitely a little ADHD myself, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm a movie guy because movies, it's this it's one of those things where you experience you know things that you experience in your childhood that really mm -hmm. transport you movies transported me into another place mm -hmm. so that okay. i could survive and movies continue to operate in that space for me where they mm -hmm. transport me whereas comics even though they might be beautiful um mm -hmm. and there's exceptions um the alien three comics when i saw that when i bought those when i was 15 um because i couldn't see the movie um i was definitely transported i was like in that world okay um Frank Miller's The Dark Knight, I was transported when I opened that book. I mean, that book was like opening the Necronomicon or something. Like, I was like, <laughs> whoosh. Like, I opened that book and it was like wind blew out of me or something because it was definitely a different take on Batman. Um, but generally, movies just transport me in, the, in, in every realm to the world that they're creating, and comics just don't do that. They're just... That's fair. Uh, and again, it's just my experience with them. I don't. I, I think they're worthy, and there are some that I own for sure um, that cool. I, I have enjoyed. I just, I don't have that the connection. The I connection you. that you. I wish I did actually. I wish I did have a larger connection, but I also don't have the attention span either. Honestly, part Sorry. of reading comics to me is is it, it takes it takes it takes it took a while for me to really get the hang of it personally because I, I was sort of introduced to it as a kid and I inherited actually speaking of Secret Wars I inherited a lot of the original run of that from my uncle he kind of That's got awesome. me into it and all of these like Italian comic books that I couldn't read but I could look at the pictures and you know I got used yeah. to the idea of comics when I was a kid but in terms of really piecing them together so the images felt like they were moving for me and felt like I was actually kind of watching something unfold that was something I had to really kind of concentrate on developing um, so like so Jamie I, I think. I, I will say one of the reasons why we love comics so much in our household is because so like so so Paul we read at least one issue of something every night mm -hmm. with the kids and like you know we sit down That's in bed awesome. and we go through from the very beginning and and part of why we do that is because it's it's like you open it and you get to basically just live in a movie for yeah. a while if if yeah. you get you, if you get your imagination to the point where you're used to kind of going there yeah totally so it, but it's something that like it takes it takes time to figure that out and it's well, for everybody but it's like it's like uh, again I'm gonna butcher this it's uh, oh my gosh uh, manga like did I say that right see I see yep. I say it, yep. I'm, saying, I'm really bad with this stuff and so um I. It, the reason I mispronounce it is because I don't really, I'm not familiar with it really at all. And I'm not really an anime guy. And I remember I got some Star Wars uh, man guest stuff recently and I didn't realize the way you read it was differently than the it's way backwards. You, yeah. It's backwards. And I was like, <laughs> right. this is blowing my mind. Like I could not right. figure it out. So I totally get what you're saying, uh, Patrick, is that 
you're right. Like if you don't know comics, there's a, a friend of mine who loves to read and he loves films like, like, like Jamie and he just can't get into it. And he told me it's cause he doesn't know, like, how do you follow? Like where, I don't even know where to go. And it is, it's, it, but you know, if you're, if you're wondering, if you're kind of intimidated by it, which again, I totally get why you would be is you just go left to right. You know, that's when, whenever, you know, whenever it fails and unless you get the real, real uh, artsy or kind of experimental comics where they kind of take the paneling and, and do, you know, these splash pages or, or whatever, you know what I'm saying, uh, Patrick here, but those are fewer and far between. So if you're, if you're from, if you're kind of like, well, how do I read comic pa you know, pages, which again, it's understandable. That's a great point. I never think about that because I've, I grew up reading and, and, and know like where to connect the dots and, and someone said left to right that's kind of left and it's kind of, you know, do that. So if you're wondering how to read a comic, that's the best way to do it. Cause if you uh, manga is like totally backwards and it, it, it just knowing, so I know how you're going through. If you, if you have trouble reading comics, I totally get it. Cause I tried to read manga recently and it took, it still takes me a minute cause I'm not used to it. So, but it's, but the comic medium is such a beautiful art form. And I'm, I, I have a podcast that I just, I know I'm trying to like, uh, get people to binge read more comics because of Marvel Unlimited, Comicsology Unlimited, and, and all the stuff we got now. Because Lord, if I had that when I was a kid, I'd be like, I would never leave the house. I, I, know, I can't even imagine that. Like getting a physical comic book, but before I had allowance money was like such. Because I ran through the ones my uncle gave me so quick, yeah. and then I was like begging friends to let me borrow their issues of shit. And it was like issue number thirty-one of something. And I'm like, okay, you know. But <laughs> like, I, I still have issue number thirty-one of Silver Surfer from like nineteen ninety-two, and oh. I've read that thing so many times it's falling apart. Oh yeah, and I, I have no idea what happened before it or after it but i had mephisto in it and that was fucking cool and i drew every panel of that over and over and over again because it was so is that the one with thanos and him like yeah Than yes, yes you know yeah, what i'm talking about yeah right where they create the i have the freak. same yeah. one my brother had great yep, infinity great gauntlet uh, tie-in exactly yep. yeah See? anyway we do have to wrap but that was an awesome moment though paul i love that you know this too i want to make sure you give us a chance to plug your show and before Absolutely. you do though i i do in the, the interest of hard-hitting journalism again sure. which i'm this is what i'm here for today i looked up the press release uh, and and it doesn't say anything definitive, I don't, at least from what I can take from it, in either direction. Um, but Jake Thomas, Marvel editor, said, the incredible legacies of both franchises offer some of the most compelling and exciting world building in all of science fiction. It is a thrill and an honor to be able to add to that mythology and continuity with all new stories set within those universes. So there's that, right? Which is promising. Uh, and, and then David Finch also speaks here. Uh, and he says... That he, first off, he says he's a huge fan. He sees all the movies. He loves it all. And then he says, uh, I cannot wait to see them wreaking havoc in the Marvel Universe. Capital Marvel, capital universe. Oh, so, um, but that's not the MCU, right? It, it's important yeah. to remember that. This is, we're not oh. talking about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Right? Okay, this, okay. Is, this is not, this is not, he's going to knock it Oh, no, I didn't assume that either. But, but the Marvel Universe, like, capitalizing it like that, it makes it sound like they are, like, they're, they're going to be making these Marvel comics in some, in some way. But, at the end of the day, I think this is a, it, even, even if, I mean, I am one of these people who greeted this with, with not only trepidation, but kind of like anger a little bit. And I was talking mm -hmm. to my cousin Miles about it yesterday. We were, who's another huge nerd. And we were like, kind of both like, you know, cause Dark Horse is creator owned and it's, does all these great, you know, creative things. And, um, and it's been a really great, it, like they haven't messed it up, you know, in all of these decades, they've had this IP. They've always, you know, watered the garden and, and let it grow. And uh, and this is a and Marvel, who's just this indomitable thing owned by Disney now, can just eat up whatever it wants to eat up, and they're sort of making it. And there's something about me that is a little bit afraid of that. But at the same time, I think we need to remember how lucky we are that these IPs are still being sought. They're still being the people are recognizing their value. People are recognizing that there's a potential future in this work, and they are putting together teams of really great people to to work on it. And I think that. If we can keep our eyes on that aspect of things, there's this is actually a good announcement. I do have to say though that I feel for Dark Horse in this moment, yeah. and that I feel like Mike Richardson's incredible company, what they've built with that thing, is uh, is is like nothing else. You know, it, it, I mean, they, they they really are such incredible way pavers in in terms of independent comic storytelling, and uh, and I and I really hope that they continue to create amazing new content. They continue to get those licensing deals that they've been so great with, and that this is not going to be a huge, huge loss for them. Um, they're having a really bad year, obviously, like the entire industry is because of COVID. Uh, because, I mean, really, printing presses around the country were shut down for weeks. Like, wow. there, there were no new comics coming out. And you can't even imagine what that does for an industry to all of a sudden be disrupted like that, right? Let alone, I mean, Marvel is not Dark Horse. Dark Horse has won one millionth of the operating budget, yeah. you know? So anyway, I hope that this is not a uh, particularly bad thing for Dark Horse. I hope that they made money on this sale 
And I hope that they uh, continue giving their incredible people you know, opportunities to tell the stories that they tell so well. And I hope that Marvel is going to not fuck this up. Man, you, you said it best. Like it's Dark Horse. I really feel for Dark Horse because they lost Star Wars, which is huge. I mean, think about that. I mean, they they took Star Wars when Marvel just didn't want to take a chance, even even after the original trilogy. And then they and then George Lucas was you know very loyal, and that's how George is, and he kept it on with them forever. And they and the one thing I, I would say I don't love everything Dark Horse does. Obviously, I'm not I'm actually not a big Hellboy fan. I tried, I just can't. I love the move the original two movies, but um, but either way, the one thing I love about Dark Horse is it's it's more it's more of an artistic, I'd say, creative or you know creator owned uh, uh area for, you know more than marvel is marvel is way more controlled i mean obviously these ips and properties are going to be controlled to an extent but not as much as marvel or anything like that it's dark horse is way more lenient and, and let, letting their creators create through like an independent film studio almost exactly that, and yeah. that's basically what they are i mean yeah yeah, they, yeah. They, they're an independent comic studio yeah and so with what you're getting and just reading earth war even um and again i haven't read a ton of of the comic books admittedly from you know aliens and whatnot but reading the marvel comics i can tell you that the more bonkers stories that you read in dark horse that i've heard about you know even that you're not gonna probably get those as much in marvel unfortunately i don't and again, I don't know if that's good or bad. It depends on what your preference is. And obviously, obviously art is not necessarily one person's viewpoint. It's everyone's. So, um, you know, if you if you like a more straight ahead story and less art, less art, artsy fartsy, if you will, then you might be more stoked with Marvel. If you love the more, you know, nuanced stuff and a little more of a little more depth to your stories, I mean, you you might not love everything Marvel puts out. I don't know. I, I don't know what, how Marvel's going to attack this. Obviously, Marvel does put out great books, like Immortal Hulk is a great, you know, arty. It, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it's it really, but it's that's more the exception than the rule. And, is, I, yeah. and, and unfortunately, and again, I, I love anything. I love anything as long as it's good. It could be popcorn. It could be artsy. It could be whatever. But it really depends on what it is and just if it's good or not, you know, for in my taste. So I think that what this, this, this is unfortunate for Dark Horse in a financial aspect, let's be real. I mean, they've lost massive, um, this is a massive blow for them in my opinion. And I don't know if they gain anything from this, if they got money from this, because maybe with Disney owning the IP, they can, they're allowed to at a certain point renew or take the contract elsewhere. And, you know, I mean, it, it yeah. makes sense. So I, I don't know. I, Mar I don't know if Marvel is gonna F it up necessarily but I do think that there's there's potential for some great stories that they could they could be creating for us. And if anything, this is this is the time for these franchises and Alien to be relaunched overall. We're ta not talking just in comics, but just the whole franchise. And I think this, and we talked about it. This is the this is this the maybe not the first. Maybe this is like part of the relaunch of these titles and one thing i'm very very curious of i know i'm sorry i talked forever you guys have probably noticed this already um we do but, too, don't worry <laughs> excellent excellent so i'm very curious what you thought because again going back to star wars they made everything canon after they after dark horse they with the exception of the clone wars story that they released the last thing they, re they released it's a long story um but they everything they made everything else going forward canon with the films now i Alien, I don't, I'm not as familiar with how the canon works with the films. I don't know. And I, I, from what I could tell, they're not exactly coherent with each other completely. But they by, are, they are canon. But they are all canon together. So, but it's like, so AVP, is that still part of the canon? No. With, okay, that's okay, well, this is like, So this is something, we've had actually long conversations yeah. about this in, in, our, in our admin group. This is something, okay, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm sure our, our thread is blowing up right now. I, I'm not going to say definitively that AVP is not part of the main continuity, sure. but I do know that the extended universe alien properties that have been vetted by 20th century are, I don't uh, know about AVP. But okay. there was recently, you're talking about the movies or the, or the comics? I'm talking the about the movies themselves. Well, okay. I'm sorry, oh, I'm talking with, with movies. Oh, movies, the yeah. movies aren't a part of, alien canon that and fox okay. well before they were sold came yeah. out and said they are not they are their okay. own thing um publicly so this, they said this so this is what i'm curious of could because there's a couple different angles you could go with i mean obviously you have the marvel comics and marvel cinematic universe are vastly different and they could go that route and keep it that way or they could i'm curious with with how covenant haven't hasn't been blown up to be this big movie and prometheus as well and you gotta wonder are they just gonna relaunch everything 
Like, if they, are they just going to wipe the slate right. clean and say, even film-wise, we're going to go the more connective universe now with these properties like Alien and Predator? Sorry, I don't, and I'm not trying to be a you know, comfortable or not, what's the word? Uh, uh, I'm not trying to stir the pot here, but and I, I thought about it. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, if you're, if you're Disney and you own uh, 20th Century and you're thinking, okay, Covenant didn't set the world on fire, the Predator didn't set the world on fire, and what has been the most successful thing now? It's these connective tissue films, these cinematic, cinematic universes. What does that mean? What would that mean from you as, a, as, a, as an executive and knowing that you have the people in control of, or you know how to basically run a, a connected universe? And you've got to think with now, with, you know, you're, putting, you're already putting Predator and Alien together with the Marvel comics already like with, with this joint announcement. And you got to think, is this, is, is this something where they might go with now? Is this going to be a new relaunch of everything where, you know, I don't know. Well, I don't, I think it might be an, a new relaunch of everything, but they're not going to go with Alien versus Predator. Those, those, those um, ideas were put forth in two films that failed, essentially. And the second one failed even miserably, more miserably than the first. It's not to say that they couldn't probably come up with it. successful, I thought marginally enough for a second but the second one just flopped and it was awful it's, but that's true. Oh, that's true also within the 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 history of the alien ip and anything that's involved the alien or the predator um alien really hasn't had a, a really successful film in uh since aliens However, per, <laughs> Prometheus yeah. was Prometheus did make some money for sure, but it w yeah. made more money on based on its novelty and on Ridley Scott returning to science yeah. fiction, blah blah blah, and so people were interested. And it was it was an, a novel film for sure in some regards, but the films also the they just haven't been successful financially. Mm -hmm. I don't th I think I would imagine Fox is going to try and relaunch Alien on its own merits first and then see if it doesn't, or I'm sorry, Disney. Um, but it, it's it also, you know, you ha again, you have a history of films that have been made by committee and I've gone over this over and over and they're going to have to, they're going to have to rethink how they make these films if they're going to want to make a successful yeah. one. And even, you know, you've had the, the, the father of the genre in charge and they're still not making that much money. So something's still quite not working and they got to figure out what that is until they can. So, and I think really the, the answer really is streaming uh, a show that follows characters for 10 episodes, 10 yeah. one hour episodes. That's hard R um, that gets involved in character and it's in, the, whether it's in the universe of aliens or the, in the universe of alien three or alien, something that brings us back to what we remember yet, yet doing something completely different. That's and of course the closest corollary to streaming is comic books. Like that's, it's the same exactly. thing, yeah. right? It's, yeah. it's serialized yeah. storytelling yeah. with yeah. semi self-contained installments yeah. of an ongoing story. It just doesn't so have like, the kind of audience that a, a a Hulu show would or a Netflix show would, you know, well, I mean, well, you, you mean like you don't think alien, you think the alien doesn't, wouldn't have an, a, an audience for Hulu? Oh, well, I just don't think it makes the kind of money and grabs the really? kind of attention. Alien comic book releasing isn't going to kind of grab the kind of oh, attention. The, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're right. That an alien film or a series, like it's going to be Absolutely. all over. It's going to be plastered. When an alien comic releases, you might find out on like, <laughs> yeah. three channels. You know what I mean? Right. Well, they're going to just... want their money from this, from this IP. Well, because with, with these com again with the comics, it's it, I just wonder, it, are they going to go? Is, 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 is are the comics going to continue to be in its own universe? And I'm curious, and are right. the books are the books separate with the comics? Are they kind of joint, kind of like the Star Wars books and comics are? So the the books are a whole separate situation because Titan has the title for like the novels, um, right. and so so and it, so they they but they also now cross over with video games. Like there was an Alien Isolation novel that was put out last year too. So so there's the 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 IP for Alien is pretty widely decentralized at this point, okay. And they don't really align with each other too much. Back back okay. in the day, a lot of Dark Horse comics had corresponding novels published alongside them with some. However, people yeah, before the merger. Uh, our friend Steve Zerlin, who was the VP of franchises, who we talked to, was saying that there was a whole team put in place to create a new universe, a shared mm -hmm. universe, yeah. with yeah. that that new game that's coming out, supposedly still coming out this fall. <laughs> yeah, eventually, yeah. Um, and then, like, um, Alien Echo was the young adult novel that they launched that featured a character that was going to be in the game. Um, uh, so they were really yeah. trying to... Um, streamline all this and keep it contained and I don't I, I think that that is I'm sure uh, 
Disney has a different idea now. What well, they and see, do, and this right? is what, and this for me again, going from the Star Wars idea, is that they make every, well everything is supposed to be canon, right? Everything is supposed to be connected. That means the films, the books, the comics, the video games, and you gotta you gotta wonder with this announcement with the comics, is there an announcement? With, and that's why I said about the relaunch, like a whole a whole reboot of of everything with Predator and Alien, and saying okay. Here's a, you know, have some people like that are dedicated to organizing the whole continuity and, and everything and not have it be just disjointed like you guys were kind of talking about. And therefore, you could kind of start, you know, developing these, these properties and saying on a Hulu or whatever and say, hey, fans of the comics are on Hulu, you have this and you have that and you get more investment with these characters. And that's why, to be honest, I kind of think that there's going to be something like that because... It just it just makes sense when you have these movies that aren't making money, like you said, Jamie. Like, there, I totally get it. And you gotta wonder that you know, Predator and Aliens have enough fans, and with streaming, content is king. And we know Predator and Alien are gonna bring people in. And but let's be real, it's it's getting too convoluted, even for these, even for for someone like me who loves these movies and goes and sees them. I'm like, wait, so is is Prometheus canon with Alien still? Because doesn't it contradict? It's like, how does this work? It's hard for me to grasp and remember everything from these films. And yeah, it's it's just hard. So it's just you gotta wonder how are they going to bring this into? And because you know it's gonna make money. These are great. They stood the test of time. And we know that they, they're, they're, they're worth pursuing, but how do you do that? And to me, honestly, it's, it's a reboot. It's a reboot. Yeah, of it's everything. a complete hard reset. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. To make money. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh yeah. But if, if that's, if that's the ultimate goal, which with Disney, of course it is going to be the ultimate yeah, goal. So we're going to see what happens. And, but I, I think we, obviously we need to wrap this We I have to go. Um, but I think what's most important is that, in order for them to really be successful with these films, whether it's Predator or Alien, they have got to get people in there who have a passionate story to tell that yeah. doesn't pivot around the same old things that we've seen. In a ship, exploring a derelict, in a ship, um, in a ship, in a, in a space station, in a ship, exploring a derelict. I mean, we've got to be, there's got to be a new way to tell the story. And there are new ways to tell the story. Um, and they're going to have to understand that they need a Kevin Feige, um, somebody in yeah. there who knows, okay, I'm here. I know how important this is. So let's get, I'm not, I'm just going to throw their names out like the Russo brothers. Let's get, they have wanted to tell an alien story for a long time. Of course, they're talking about, you know, other like Marvel characters, but they need to, Kevin Feige knows I can get this person. I can get Taika White, YTT and have him in here and he can tell a wholly unique and passionate story and it can be really successful. Um, that's why Kevin Feige is so amazing. Um, that's what they need to do with Alien. They need to get someone in charge who knows what they're doing, not Kathleen Kennedy. Um, so. <laughs> we're going to see there's a lot of unknowns at this moment in time and we're going to get all those unknowns gradually revealed to us as time goes on. But I do think the reason why I mentioned streaming uh, alongside comic books is because there are such clear crossovers creatively in that same format in terms of telling a story, kind of building a universe that has to like last over time. Like I think that these comics, whatever form they end up taking, will be a really good indication into potential yeah. storytelling avenues that they could explore Absolutely. in the future. And I, I am 100% agreeing with you guys that streaming is the future of this, I think. And I think that like if they can pull off really good serialized comic storytelling, because the people who will be creating these comics will be talking to the people who are creating the movies. Exactly. It's all a vertically yeah. integrated oh, for company sure. now. Yeah. So like, so this is all, they're, they're not going to be, you know, doing things that are unauthorized at this point for better or for worse. But in terms of for better, this could be a good window into what a streaming series could look like or what that world building would, would uh, mm -hmm. eventually emerge as. We do have to wrap. Um, Paul, before we yes, do, sir. where can people find you? Well, man, I'm on, so I'm on, uh, my friend just changed the name of the show. It used to be called Marvel Studios News, but I think it's called MC, MCU Fan Show, I think now. It's, it, he didn't even tell me. I was, I was like, whoa. So I was, I was confused. So it's, it used Go back to, to the other one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Marvel Studios News. I think he didn't, yeah, it's a whole long story, I think. But, uh, okay. MCU Fan Show, I believe it's what that one's called. We've been around for a long time. I used to be called Marvel Studio Studios News. Um, I'm also on a podcast called The Saga Continues, which is a Star Wars podcast. I've uh, been on that for a long time. So check those out on Twitter. Um, yeah, all that stuff. And also have a, a comic book podcast with my friend Chris. It's called The Comic Binge. And uh, we just go and we take a, a book of comics or a, a set of comics and say what we think about them. And then we say where you continue the binge later. So it'll you can if you like them, we'll tell you where to go and read like 50 more comics. So 
Um, cool. It's a lot of fun. It's a passion project. So if you like comic books, check it out. Great. Thank you so much awesome. for coming on. Between, yes. between the thank three you. of us, we have about 400 podcasts on this show right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really no, sure. you guys, thank you, for, thank you for letting me invite myself on. Like, I, I'm a big fan of you guys. Show you guys, you guys are Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks for listening thank again. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I'll check All right, out your everyone. too. Thanks thank for watching. Guys. We'll be back with right. you soon. For more on Perfect Organism, the Alien Saga podcast, please visit perfectorganism.com. Perfect Organism is available for listen or download through Podbean, iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn, and Spotify. If you'd like to support the show, please visit perfectorganism.com forward slash support. Thank you.